You want to hold your own? Oh, we are all, it's all in the trunk. Isn't that wonderful? Okay.
Good morning, everyone. Our order of service will continue on page 355 with the Easter acclamation. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of your people, grant that when we hear his voice we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he leads, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated, and those kiddos who want to go with Miss Deb to Children's Chapel are welcome to do so, and I'm going to grab a bulletin for our acolyte. A reading from Acts. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, by what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you the builders, it has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. The psalm this morning is found in our bulletin, and it's the well-known 23rd Psalm. If we could begin and end with the refrain and read responsibly by half verse, please. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul. And guides me. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your God is the staff that comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. The second reading is 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 24. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth and will reassure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before God and we receive from him whatever we ask because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment that he that we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit that he has given us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual hymn is number 518. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. My friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, who loves us so much to burst forth from the tomb for us, pour out your Spirit upon us so that we, with truly thankful hearts, may praise you and give thanks for the blessings of this life. We ask that you guide us, as the Good Shepherd, to the still waters and green pastures, so that all of your beloved may grow and nourish, be nourished in your sustaining love. This we pray in your name, the one who loves first. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Well, here we are, the fourth Sunday of Easter, which is historically and traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Right? Kind of easy to see in those readings. We hear the 23rd Psalm. We hear Jesus from the Johannine Gospel say, I am the Good Shepherd. And so it makes sense. And so... Across Episcopal dioceses around the world, at churches named Good Shepherds, there are bishops visiting right now. Ah, it's not us, though. Whew! Whew! You don't have to worry about that. Not yet. That's coming. And so we get to wrestle with this image, this reality that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and it's an interesting one because God, in God's wisdom, gave us some poetry that just like bread and wine was the commonplace. Everybody knew shepherds. Everybody was a shepherd. You had something. I mean, it's kind of like now almost every, you know, a lot of us have our own chickens. We're all chicken farmers. But everybody was, and so it was just this common language. And frankly, I've been struggling for a fair analogy in our modern world. Jesus, our good and holy GPS. No, our good and holy, like, healthcare advocacy system? No. A lot of just hard places. But in that same reality that I'm not sure we are able to envelop ourselves in the mystery of the shepherd without all of that intimate knowledge, this psalm, the 23rd psalm, is one that is woven into us. So much so that we can't escape the good shepherd because this is so there. And in fact, I'm I'm sure all of us struggled a bit reading the modern translation because in us is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, right? That's just part, and thanks be to God, to William Tinsdale, who wrote that version that eventually became part of the King James Bible. Even when I've been at death's beds and people are so very close, 
that is something that will come to the lips. That in the Lord's Prayer is just so a part of us. And so I want you to just take a moment to think about when you've maybe prayed that prayer before, that 23rd Psalm, remembering that all of our psalms are both hymns and prayers. When's the moment that you've prayed it? About a decade ago, ah, it wasn't that long ago, about eight years ago, I was blessed to be on a spiritual retreat uh, in which I always did like some wilderness retreat. I'd go backpacking or whatnot. And it was August of uh, one summer, and I was about to go backpacking, and I said, wait a minute, Brown. Why in August are you going to go into the woods, into the humidity to like hike around? You've got a boat. Let's take the boat out on a trip. And so I started piecing together a dream that my brother and I formed when we were children to take a watercraft from the headwaters of the Little River where we lived and had a cabin in the Smoky Mountain National Park all the way down to its confluence with the Tennessee, down the Tennessee to Paducah, its confluence with the Ohio, down to Cairo, to the, where, the, where the Ohio and the Mississippi come together, and then all the way down to New Orleans. And so I've achieved a good part of that. From the headwaters of the Little River by inner tube <laughs> to the, one of the first dams to the one I've canoed down to my little hometown, Rockford. And from there, you can take a motorboat. And I've taken it through the locks of the TVA system all the way down to Chattanooga. And that's where, as far as I'd gotten. So that August, I decided for my spiritual retreat, I was going to take the, our boat, a nice little center console flats boat made for waters in Florida and the Gulf, but there in East Tennessee, I put in in Chattanooga, downtown, locked through, got on Gunnersville, would just pull into a cove and find a place to camp. I was wise enough not to take my dog on this trip because I knew it would just be wet dog the whole time. And I got down to about the bottom. I was heading to Muscle Shoals. That was going to be my end point. And I got down to Lake Wilson, which is a massive industrial lake in Alabama, just tons of factories, a huge dog food factory that you go by, which has an interesting smell. And at one point in time, there's about a 22, 24 mile long stretch that runs in the same direction, channel right in the middle, well marked, and it's about nine miles wide, just a big flat. And I hit it, that big open flat right in the channel, right as a good old southeastern afternoon thunderstorm blew in. And now, I can testify to the seaworthiness of this boat, but it was not water that I was prepared for. I was moving so much that I took the kill switch off my life jacket and put it on my sandals because they weren't moving as much. I was wearing, of course, my life jacket and my backpack, which had dry bags in it for extra flotation, and I was prepared to not go down with that ship, but prepared that it might. And on the Tennessee River and flooded, I mean, in damned waters, I was in waves so big that standing on my boat, I was behind the waves and couldn't see the shore. It scared me. One of the few times I was very scared. And when I look back, it was the 23rd Psalm that came to my lips. Yea, though I walk through the valley, it was out of order because I was just so panicked, but yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, lead me to still waters. I got through it, lost a part of the boat, it's all right, got through it, the, the punting pole, got to the dam, locked through, got to my campsite and spent the night, and I was done. I'd made it to Muscle Shoals, but I had to go back. And so the next day, I got to that same stretch. Now, I was a bit wiser and did it in the morning, but again, there was just this panic. And a hymn came to me. So sorry for all of you all, but go Navy, beat Army. And it was Eternal Father, whose arm has bound the restless wave. Let us pray for those in peril on the sea. And so as I rounded that corner, just flop sweating with terror, prepared to meet those waves again, I was confronted with the reality that my prayers had been answered. And I had clean, flat water. And so hammer down, and I got out of there. And as I was going through and, and wrestling with my mortality and the reality of where I'd been and how foolish it had been, 
I was reminded in those ways that the Spirit moves and grace is given as a, a time in college when my roommate and I, for a, about six-month period, whenever we would make plans, hey, I'll see you at shenanigans, right? Our response would be, if I'm alive then, I'll see you there. Now, as 20-year-olds, that was a very odd thing, but it was the reality that my college life was wrapped with friends dying of suicide and in car accidents and drug overdoses and even an industrial accident. And so the frailty of life was right there. And so Nick and I just kind of flippantly turned it into just every day, like, see you later, alligator. If I'm alive, I will. And all this wrapped together for me as I prepared and thought about our Good Shepherd Sunday. When I've prayed the 23rd Psalm, and the reality of what we are all engaged in. Some of us, through the chances and misfortunes and fortunes of life, know much more closely how frail life is. Our life has been close, and we know that we are frail, or we have experienced that close in our intimate families. And it's a truth that our society tries to push away so hard. But the reality is there's not one of us that is getting out of this place alive. Not one of us. And so we have this short time to gladden the lives of those we're around. This short time to be who God has called us to be, who has made us to be. This short time to live and love. And as we think about and wrestle with that reality and hear in this Easter season the truth that we hear every fourth Sunday of Easter, that Jesus is our Good Shepherd that Jesus leads us and lays us down, it is not our power, but God's power. The grace of God that blew the wind, that caused the waves, and that stilled them. The grace of God that took us through the valley of the shadow and leads us to those places where we're sustained. And so as we practice our resurrection, as we intentionally this Easter wrestle with the reality that life is fragile and we are called to new life, I'm curious, where is the shepherd calling you? What waters are you being led to? What valley are you called to walk through? What grass is being sown for you, for your sustenance? And in that, how are you finding new life? Where is God calling you to wrestle with the frailty of our existence and the reality that God has given to all of us? the grace to love as we are loved. So let us, let us sing in the face of death. Let us laugh knowing it has no more power. Let us pray when that fear does overcome us. And let us live, loving as God loves us. In the name of the one who loves first, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us turn to page 358 and profess our faith and unity in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, came incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are found on page 383 in the Red Book, Book of Common Prayer. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, our presiding Bishop, Michael Curry, our, Bur our bishops, Samuel and Jennifer, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joe Biden, our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the city of Pittsburgh, the county of Chatham, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and the infirmed, and for the widows and the orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. James and St. Bartholomew and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To thee, O Lord, our God. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer, and know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Turning to page 360, let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Thank you. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
lot going on there. And I know I just kind of blew through that. So if you've got questions, come talk to me. Other announcements? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, uh, <coughs> several of us, several of us are, uh, are trying to uh, reestablish our connection to St. James. So as you travel around the city and the town and the community, if you become aware of someone that was once affiliated with St. James, you know, we'd like to know about it. Kathy would like to know. Mac would like to know. Anybody in the men's group would like to know. Uh, we're building a, a small sort of database of who we can reach out to, who's still alive. Uh, we have recordings of some of the former St. James mem members that have passed away. We have some of them on tape. Uh, we are working on trying to uh, find a legal way to access the cemetery. So um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. And in case you haven't heard about St. James and our efforts, I would like you to please pray for our ability to reconnect with St. James. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any birthdays, anniversaries, special occasions we need to pray for? <coughs> 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 I was accused of not noticing people's hands last week. So, uh, well, come up here so we can give you all a prayer and blessing. Yes. Oh, my, my, I turned my microphone off. Thanks, Kevin. So good. The internet didn't hear me giving the parishioners guff there. Good. That's right. <laughs> Any other birthdays, anniversaries, announcements? We got two birthdays coming up. Okay. Wonderful. Congratulations. All right. All right. So Collins is next Sunday, and Ashley's was this past Wednesday. That's right. My friends, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks, and we ask that you look down upon these, your servants, and be present with them as their days increase. Give them an ever-abiding sense of your presence in their lives, and allow them to grow into the people you have called them to be, to love as they are loved. Bless them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, so that they may love in the name of God and be loved in his name. This we pray in the name of the one who loves first, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Call. High five. Yeah, all right. All right, we've got one last announcement. I'm going to turn that over to Terry. Get up here where I've got a nice light to see by. I'm Terry Transu. I'm your director for Community Lunch and for the outreach that we also try to do further than the lunch in the community. Uh, so this is about the lunch. We've had wonderful success with the lunch. The lunch has served food to this community for 15 years. This is our 16th year. It has also provided a place for people to gather together, share and support each other. It's given its volunteers a chance to give back, support each other and become a family of real characters. During COVID, we found a way to get food out to people who were really having a tough time. When most everyone withdrew, we stepped forward. St. Bart's is a pillar church in this community and county fighting against food insecurity and giving comfort to those having a rough time. You don't have to be in financial straits to be having a rough time in life. Our success has grown from last summer when I said we've hit 150, which seems our peak abilities, to now in 24 we're at 185 to 200 each week. That's 750 to 800 individual servings a month to this surrounding area. Our drive through is held 1130 to 1230, and we have reopened the parish hall for a sit-down lunch and camaraderie from 1230 to 130. I know we're all proud of our outreach to this community. It's gone fairly easy until recent times, the last four months. 
Easy means we had enough money to cover the bills. Now we barely make it from week to week, sometimes propped up by individuals, sometimes the rector's fund thanks to Father Mac. Numbers are up, donations are down, needs up, costs up, the complications of success for this type mission. In previous times, we were able to have significant dinner fundraisers, which COVID stopped. Four years later, and times and people all have changed. Twice we planned dinners, and both times group gathering health issues interfered. We've cut costs where possible, and we have new ideas. What we know for sure is we cannot continue this way, so we've developed a plan. The number one choice on this plan is that St. Bart's continue to solely sponsor the cost of the lunch and let it continue to develop, not just survive week to week. Here's the idea. Lunch sponsorships. We want 80 people, parishioners and or community to commit $20 a month to support the lunch, $240 a year. Some may love this effort and wish to support at a much greater level. Please consider becoming a sponsor. You can so easily see what your money is doing and how it's being used for the good of this community. A meal currently costs about $3.23. At $240, you'd provide 75 hot meals. Kevin is assisting us with a way to contribute online via the St. Bart's website. Dora can always apply your check when noted for community lunch. We will have a QR code like Dakota did for Barking Biscuits and we'll assist you to take you to the appropriate place. We'll make the process clear as it all finalizes. We need consistency of a figure we can count on each month. Thus, it's better for a sponsor to set up a monthly withdrawal bank or credit card. If we can generate a solid sponsorship base and carefully control our food costs along with guest donations each week, we can make it and we can sustain reasonable growth. How our St. Bart's family responds to this request will dictate decisions. I'm always available to discuss uh, any questions and hear any ideas that you might have. Please search your hearts. Lots of places are asking for your support dollars. As a church, we need to make our choices. I'm asking you to consider supporting the chosen mission outreach of our church in this community. Would anybody that's part of the lunch or has some opinion to express, would you, you like to say anything to the congregation? I don't know who you might be, but... Um, Mary. Just so you know that people who come, a variety of people, there are people who come for camaraderie, and there's a place where they socialize, there are people who come through and they're tired, and they need help. But you're feeding people for the church. Thank you. Several of us, daughters of the king, were at a diocesan-wide meeting yesterday, and the most common question we got was, oh, you're from St. Mark's. You do the community lunch? Could we come and observe? We, we, I mean, it's a special For only $80 a ticket, all the daughters of the king can come. <laughs> Thank you, that's right. Thank you, Terry. F friends, this, uh, it feeds me every week to be with the volunteers who are there, to be outside as Dave is getting everything wrangled. Uh, 
Elizabeth hadn't even gotten after me. I cut some irises the other day. Because a, a person going through said, can I have a couple irises? Dave will testify. I did a good job. Uh, but it's just, it is a, an aspect of our relational presence in this community that is very understated and overwhelmingly powerful. So please do uh, consider, uh, you know, a Starbucks every other week or so uh, here or such not. All right? I don't know how much Starbucks costs, so I don't, I don't know. That's right. Any other announcements? Nothing. I have no idea. It's right, right. My friends, all are invited to communion. Please cup your hands together to allow me to place a wafer there and help the chalice bearer guide the chalice to your lips. If you would prefer to dip the wafer in the consecrated wine, this dish will have consecrated wine for you to do that, so as few as hands as possible go into the chalice, and we have gluten-free wafers available as well. If you prefer not to receive either element, just know that you can come forward with your arms crossed to receive a blessing. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice for all.
My friends, we continue with the great Thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer D on page 372 of our prayer book. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. In beholding the glory of your presence and offering you, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Our, your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his first own gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be the holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, 
the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. James and St. Bartholomew and all of your saints, who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, sins, have mercy on us. gifts of God for you, the people of God. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
My friends, we conclude with the post-communion prayer found on page 365. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, Arden. Thank you, Arden.